Excuse me, please. Yes? Could you read this to me? Yes, of please. course. Your name is Greg Halliday. You have rented a room at 11 Winsham Terrace, SW7. The landlady's name is Mrs. Evans. You have paid her a month's rent in advance. Remember to buy food. You read the address again, please. Yes, of course. 11 Winsham Terrace, SW7. Mr. Halliday, here are the keys. Um, that's the front door key, and that's for your room. Number seven, just upstairs. Thank you, Mrs. Evans.
I'm sorry, Sir Curtis, I do not agree at all. That's very unfortunate. Halliday has not committed a crime. He is unbalanced and dangerous. He must be found at once and... Department S does not commit murder, Dr. Stigney. I wasn't asking that. But you would like to, so I am answering you in advance. No. Well, well. Sir Curtis Soretzi meets Dr. Stickney's train. Do you know what that means? Mm. That Department S also is looking for Halliday. But we know where he is, and we must get to him first. Well, Young is watching the house. Halliday can't stay in his room forever. He's staying? Yes. You better get back and relieve Young. Check in to the hotel, then contact my department. I've briefed them thoroughly. I hope not too thoroughly. Ask for Stuart Sullivan. I'm sick and tired of this routine. We're not a missing persons bureau. I couldn't agree with you more, but this missing person is particular. How? To whom? To Sir Curtis, for one. Well, there is a police department, you know. He's top secret and very hush-hush. Why, who is Greg Halliday? Gregory Francis Halliday, born London, 1934. Got a first in chemistry at Cambridge, 1957. Nine days ago, he drove to London from Lansdowne Park, left his car somewhere and got the train back. Yeah, I know, fascinating. Two days later, that's seven days ago, he got a train from Salisbury and hasn't been seen since. Okay, so Halliday's vanished. Dr. Stickney's here. What's he like? Mad scientist type. Quite the reverse. Well, let's have it. Well, Dr. Stickney, would you come in, please? This is Mr. Stuart Sullivan. How do you do, Doctor? And this is Mr. Jason King. How do you do? You and the Jason King who writes the Mark Cain books, Yes. Ah, now that I've met you, I must read one of them sometime. I take it you have been briefed on what I do? Not completely. We know you're head of the Chemical and Biological Warfare Research Establishment at Lansdowne Park, that's all. That's enough. Is it, really? Our work at Lansdowne is top secret. Well, it's hideous enough to be so. I agree completely. Chemical warfare is just as horrifying to me as it is to you. You work at it, we don't. I work at it because the Americans spend 300 millions a year on it. The Russians, a lot more. Meaning we have to be able to poison Moscow's water supply because they're able to poison ours? It is a deterrent. I suppose. Every bit as final as nuclear weapons. Isn't civilization wonderful? Chemical and bacteriological warfare are facts of life, gentlemen. Facts that you and I and everybody else has to live with. Or die with. That is a distinct possibility. Unless you find Greg Halliday. <laughs> How long do we wait? Until he comes out. Mr. Halliday! Mr. Halliday! Mr. Halliday! What is it? Open this door, please. 
Not now. You've been in there for seven days. I want to know what's going on. Nothing. Mr. Halliday, I have a master key here. Either you open that door or I will. Mrs. Evans, please. I've been ill. I'm better now. Please, give me an hour to clean, get cleaned up, please. All right. Till 11 o'clock. Dr. Stickney, we can't work in the dark. And we won't. So if you really want us to help you... Trust us. Very well. Greg Halliday is under the effects of oxytriethylene oxaric acid. We call it Totriox-5 for short. It's a nerve gas. Nerve gas? Yes. He took it himself. Deliberately? Oh, yes. Why? It had never been tested on a human being, only on animals. He wanted to uh, accurately determine the dosage and experience the effects. He works on it. He invented it. What are the effects of oxytriethylene oxalic acid? It's a hallucinogen. Like LSD? No, oh, more dangerous. In what way? Its effects. But like LSD, very minute doses have disastrous results. Could you specify that, please? Reversal of vision, upside down or right to left. Hallucinatory fantasies. The dose person can see his own body as though it were a separate entity. He suffers amnesia, even forgetting his own name. He becomes almost bovine, completely docile and obedient. How very useful. Are you amused, Mr. King? Constantly. Well, in this case, terrified. Go on, Doctor. The dose person loses all sense of touch. He could, for example, plunge his hand into boiling water and feel nothing. These effects, though, they're permanent? We're not sure. We think they wear off between five and ten days. To contemplate the ultimate horror, how do you propose to distribute Otriox 5? Combined with water, one part to a million of water, just a few thousand gallons sprayed by aircraft could incapacitate London. Fancy. I did not come here to argue the morality of chemical warfare. Morality. It has no morality. I agree. But until the rest of the world thinks the same way, we have to work on it. Please go on, Doctor. Uh, diluted its uh, nerve gas, but in its pure state, immensely lethal, killing within three or four seconds of inhalation. I take it then that Halliday's disappearance is a security threat? Yes. How? I prefer not to say. Are you suggesting he's defected, sold the formula to the proverbial Russian? No. No, he's not a traitor. Then how is he a security risk? No comment. Well, has he breached security regulation? No. Well, committed a felony? No. You mean all he's done is walk off the job? Just find him. We want him back. Even though he's done absolutely nothing to break the law? That is irrelevant. Not quite, Dr. Stickney. Not to us. In fact, no one has any right to look for Halliday, let alone interfere with him in any way. You will follow Sir Curtis's orders. You will find Greg Halliday. Come in, Mrs. Evans. Well, it's a holiday. I, I was getting quite worried. Sorry. Well, we haven't heard a sound out of you for a week. I was beginning to think you were... Uh, well, I didn't know what to think. I'm sorry you worried. I've been ill. I'm much better now, thank you. Dr. Stinkney is quite correct. You will do as you're told. I think you owe it to us to tell us why. Yes, that's true. I hesitate, because the last thing I want to do is to create a panic. Panic? About what? You know what people feel about chemical warfare? Absolute horror. Quite. Greg Holliday has a considerable quantity of Otriox-5 with him. With him? Dr. Stickney thinks about 400 milliliters undiluted. Enough to deliver toxic dosage to about one million people. Ah, oh, Mr. Halliday. 
Feeling better? Yes, much better, thank you. Good. Just off to supper. <laughs> At last. We want you. <laughs> Mr. Halliday. I said, hang up. Thank you. You were brought here last night. We were forced to give you sedation. You reacted rather badly because of your recent exposure to Atriox 5. Please be patient. Your breakfast will be brought to you in a quarter of an hour. Well, I checked all our routine sources. And got routine results? I'm afraid so. Well, let's have them. For a start, the police were negative. Halliday has no record, no fingerprints. Hospitals? Also negative. Well, mightn't he have been admitted under an assumed name? I thought of that. And what did you do about it? There were 20 operators on duty all night. There were personal visits to every hospital with a photograph of Halliday and a description of his symptoms. Very efficient. Thank you. Foreign office? There's no application for a passport on file. What about relatives? He's an only child. Both parents are dead. He has a wife with a daughter at boarding school, but uh, the wife knows nothing. You're very quiet, Jason. Well, any ideas? Well, we advertise. Get his photo to every policeman in London. Is that wise? Well, we don't have to let them know why we want him. OK. And newspapers. Use one of our unlisted numbers and offer a reward of 500 pounds. Uh Make it 100. When you order caviar, you don't ask the price. What about his car? He left it somewhere in London. No, I circulated the number. The police are looking for it now. Well, let them look out for Halliday, too, will you? And see if you can get this into the afternoon editions. On my way. You know what I don't get? Why Halliday took Otriox 5 himself. Exactly. He knows the effect. Why the deliberate self-exposure? I don't know. Oh, professional vanity. Hmm? Have you ever done any cooking? What do you mean? Well, all chefs find their own brews irresistible. Oh, Jason, come on. He's an idealist, right? Oh, he's a pragmatist. OK, but he hates what he's doing. He figures it's an appalling sin against humanity. So he freaked out? Well, he's looking for... Atonement? Atonement? Do you mean a kind of martyrdom? Yes. Why else would he be carrying around enough Atriox 5 to kill a million people? Mr. Halliday, the last thing we want to do is hurt you. Where am I? Oh, dear. I had hoped for a slightly more original opening gambit. However, you are the most exclusive health farm in Wiltshire. The most exclusive in the world. In fact, it's so exclusive, you're the only guest. Who are you? Let's just say that I'm a man who knows what you've done and what you plan to do next. 
You work for an organization which we watch constantly. You're an agent. Good gracious, no. Who do you work for? The highest bidder. Now, you took a quantity of undiluted Otriox 5 from Lansdowne Park. Where is it? Is it uh, in your rented room? Rookert, take a look. And uh, Rookert, be discreet. Mr. Halliday, sooner or later you will tell us everything. That would save you a vast amount of discomfort if it were to be sooner. Well, it won't be. Our methods of interrogation are quite devastating. And let me impress upon you very thoroughly that you will not die. Your body may take on the consistency of red mud, but you will definitely not die. That would be far too simple, since you apparently fancy yourself as a martyr. Do think it over. It is not in his room. I know. Where, then? In your car, perhaps? Parked on any one of a million London streets? <sighs> I'm afraid there's no other way. You could get the Nobel Prize, you know, for ineffectuality. Somebody, somewhere, must have seen it. Ah. Well, let's see what the morning editions bring. I say, Reggie. Hmm? Look at the front page. All right, the chap that's missing? Yes. Well, what about him? I know him. You do? Yes, I ran into him on the train seven... Uh, no, eight days ago. Very odd sort of chap. You mean you talked to him? Yes, I did, as a matter of fact. Uh, I don't usually talk to people on trains. No, of course not. And? He actually gave me his address. Made me say it twice, as a matter of fact. 11 Winsham Terrace, SW7. Well, of course I passed out. What do you expect? When I came round, I called the police. And? Oh, the usual bumbling approach. They asked me my name, my address, my age. Shove you around, really. It's quite incredible. But who is this man, Halliday? I mean, what do they want him for? There should be some prints on those drawers. Oh, we'll get right on it, yes. Look, what's he done? Oh, don't touch anything until the fingerprint experts have been here. Oh, don't mind me. I just own the house, that's all. But, Mrs Evans, if you thought that uh, Halliday was a little peculiar, how, how would you feel if... I moved in. Oh. Excuse me. The fingerprints identify one Franz Ruckert, R-U-C-K-E-R-T. He's German-born, British nationalised. He was involved in a minor car crash about 17 months ago. Where? In London. The police had a record of it. He drives a black Zephyr registration number AM456C. You have been busy. Address? Two, but both negative. He had a house in Kensington, but it was torn down and made into a block of flats. Not one single break. Wait for it. You ready for the punchline? Panting for it. AM on a registration plate means Wiltshire County Council. And the car is old enough to require a Ministry of Transport test certificate. Annabelle, there are times when I quite like you. It was issued by Brown's Garages on St Anne's Street, somewhere behind Salisbury Cathedral. Oh, 
found it. You know why? You knew where to look. My wife does the filing. It's a black Zephyr, AM 456C. Customer's name is Mr. Fritz Ruckman. No, that's Rookert. Rookert. The address is uh, Wiltshire Park Health Hydro. That's on the A354 towards Dorchester. It's, uh, it's one of those places the rich people pay a fortune to be starved to death. My, my, guards at a health hydro. Very common. With dogs. Well, it keeps the frenzied guests from breaking out and hurtling towards the nearest bar. And guns. Quaint. Very. Shall we check in his patients? Oh, don't be droll. I don't know. You could lose a couple of pounds here and there. Well, I'd be positively skinny. Anyway, they're fully booked. Give us a chance to snoop around. Well, they take one look at my tongue, and then usher me out. Do you think Halliday's in there? Possibly. I've got a better idea. Let's pay the Wilshire Park Health Hydro a surprise visit. Mr. Halliday, I congratulate you on your stamina. I really do. It's remarkable. But so distressing. And so unnecessary. All we want is that sample of Otriox 5. I'm sure you do. And we'll get it. No, you won't. Perhaps you'll change your mind. No. Tomorrow. No. When we start to work on your left hand.
You know, you really aren't being very intelligent. After all, you are a scientist, aren't you? I'm also a human being. Hardly an earth-shaking distinction. Is it possible? Yes, I believe it is. You really are obsessed with the evil and the wickedness of war. Is that right? Bullseye, yes. And what do you intend to do about it? Nothing. No protest? None. If humanity is determined to die, let it. Hmm. Well, I suggest you get some sleep. Tomorrow is a busy day. My dear fellow, you wouldn't. Ten men patrol the grounds all night with guns and dogs. The house stands on 100 acres. You'd be savage to pieces before you got further than 50 yards. Will you be able to sleep all right without sedation? Perfectly. How admirable. Good night. Don't move! Slowly, very, very slowly, raise your hands high above your head. Can he send you? No. Who are you? Put these on. My name is Jason King. Why? Then lay the dogs picking up our scent. I can't. Please, trust me. Three more minutes. Be still.
trembling like an aspen leaf, but I dare say I'll survive. We'll get a doctor as soon as we reach London. And right now, we'll settle for a small bottle of brandy. What an excellent idea. I could do with a large one myself. Stuart, first pub we come to. One large bottle of brandy coming up. We uh, have a lot to talk about, Mr. Halliday. Yes. Do you have a sample of Autriox fire? Yes. Where is it? Bandaged right hand and a striped jacket. All right, Jason, don't worry, we'll find him. The ticket collector spotted his bandaged hand. I've got Annabelle to send someone to Waterloo. Between the bandaged hand and the sport jacket, they can't miss him. should be in. Yes, he'll have got to him by now. I hope so. Because somewhere he's got enough Atriox 5 to kill a million people. on that train. You missed him. Look, he must have changed his clothes. Where would he get a change of clothes at that time of night? On the train. All right, all right. The police have his photograph and his car registration. All we can do now is wait. And we're right back where we started.
Yes. Yes, Vicky. Yes? Yes. Got it. Halliday's car's been found outside the Trevor building in Eldon Street. Sullivan, get on to the Trevor building management and have them alert the head potter. Warn all elevator operators to watch for him. Too incredible. Yes, that's about it. Halliday is bursting with a revulsion against the entire human race. There's his car. Yes, there's his car. Where is he? Ah. Oh, yes, sir, I'm positive. I noticed his bandaged hand he got off of the 12th floor, sir. you I received this letter it says dear mr. King please find my father yours faithfully Janet Halliday stay where you are I've got to do it well, what's stopping you I'm the last person on earth to make a model judgment you understand? Or is there to understand? You must do it. Do you understand that this can kill a million people? Well, if it's the only way, it has to be done. What's up with you? What is it, conscience? Or guilt? Or do you consider an outrage against humanity? Yes, an outrage! Oh, I see, so it's your protest! Yes, my protest! Then what are you waiting for? Oh, right! We have enough Artyx 5 to wipe out every living creature on this planet 30 times over. What for that milling mass of inertia down there? That's 30 times sooner! What do you mean? It's an inconceivable, legal, ghastly fact! I'm aware of it. Our Jokes 5 isn't the only one. The Americans have one called GB. The Russians have one called SLX. It's all the same. A milligram can wipe out, burn out a man's insides in seconds. A few gallons properly dispersed will wipe out a whole nation. Wait a minute. Just let me understand you correctly. You mean you want it internationally outlawed? Yeah, somebody has to do something. Otherwise, total annihilation. I see. Yes. Yes, I think I would agree with that. Provided, of course, you threw it. And last year, on an isolated island, we carried out some tests. There was a sudden, unexpected change in wind direction. And 7,000 sheep died. 40 miles away. They're all doing it! France, America, Russia, Britain! It can be dropped in bombs, fired in shells, by missile. And everything below is total devastation, total destruction. To Everything. 
So you understand it is better that a million people die now than throw it. I can't. Give it to me. Just a, a small wall of nerves. 